Well, it's Friday, it's actually Black Friday, and it's time for another weekly UAS news update, week 27. And this week I wanna talk about the FA that shut down night flying at an AMA event. I also wanna talk about the FA that issued a public safety drone booklet, and I wanna talk about what's in there. We'll talk about the 8K drone from Hotel that is uh, rumored to be coming up pretty soon. And then last, I wanna talk about some large X-Wing for those uh, Star Wars fan out there that uh, have been their drone, drone looking X-Wing, that have been spotted over Disney World in Orlando. And then last I want to talk about the big Black Friday sale that we're having on our courses. So let's get started. First thing I want to talk about is uh, something that's kind of interesting. So uh, several weeks ago I actually talked about this. I talked about the fact that the FAA had um, a new process for approval for hobbyists that want to fly into controlled airspace. And a, a portion of this was the fact that the FAA does not allow hobbyists to fly at night in controlled airspace. Now, the uh, this is not really something new, but the, uh, the AMA, uh, I've talked about the AMA before, had an event that was scheduled and they had night going on at that event, so night, uh, night flying going on at that event. And uh, the FAA basically said that uh, they couldn't fly in controlled airspace. There is no waiver process at this stage for hobbyists to fly at night. And uh, it's kind of a painful thing if you think about it. You know, the AMA is kind of confused about this. They've been doing this event for years and years and years, and all of a sudden they can't do it, even though there hasn't been any accidents, nothing has happened, nothing has really changed in the way that they operate. But the FAA said, ah, can't do it. So. Uh, night flying is actually allowed for hobbyists, just not in controlled airspace. So that was kind of the, the big caveat. Uh, you, you, you'll find the article, I'm going to put a link down there. I think it's kind of a shame that uh, there's no process at this stage for hobbyists, especially a large organization, to uh, submit a waiver so that they can actually fly at night. So let me know what you think in the comments. I think uh, the FA is actually, I heard, is working on making this a process and, and working on a way for hobbyists to do this, but um, just kind of an interesting thing, I think. Um, the FA again, in the news for something else, they issued a public safety drone uh, playbook, they call it. Now the document is intended for law enforcement so that they can better understand the drone regulation. And uh, I think it's a really good read for you as a drone pilot, as a hobbyist, as a part 107 remote pilot, it doesn't really matter. You need to read this book so you can understand how an encounter with law enforcement may go or even an encounter with the FAA, which is a little bit different. This is not intended for FAA personnel. This is uh, solely intended for law enforcement officers. Uh, it's a good idea also to keep a copy of it, I think, in your bag, in your flight bag, so that you can talk to a uh, law enforcement officer that may have, may, maybe haven't seen the document in itself. Now, I want to point out a few important points. Now, if you read it, you'll see um, if you're familiar with the regulation, which hopefully you are after following this channel. So one point that I want to go over is the FAA has says in this document, it says, and I'm going to read it to you, it says, if law enforcement comes in contact with a drone pilot operator, they can ask the pilot operator to see proof of registration of the aircraft. Okay, we're familiar with that. And they can ask to see a waiver for drone operation within the TFR. It also says something in here that's repeated several times throughout the document. It says, while law enforcement can ask a, a UAS or a drone pilot is not required by federal regulation to make their pilot certificate available. You, however, must, must be showing your registration certificate. So what, what, what you get out of this is that you can deny a law enforcement officer to see your pilot certificate. Um, not that it's something that I would highly recommend, but uh, it is your right to not do it if in case it happens. So uh, this is something, again, that they repeat several times throughout the document. Um, I think, again, there's a lot of really good information in here. Uh, another part that I want to emphasize on is the fact that LEOs have to report any kind of violation to the FAA because the FAA is going to be the one that uh, have to issue any citation if anything happens. Um, it says contact a FAA law enforcement assistant program, LEAP, they call it the LEAP special agent for assistant. And there is a bunch of phone numbers in here depending on the region and they have to basically contact them. So again, I think this is a document that you need to get comfortable with, get familiar with. Uh, let me know what you think after you read it. I think, uh, you know, a lot of, of people have made comment last couple weeks on the fact that law enforcement officers may not be uh, educated about drones. And I think this is the right step forward. 
Uh, there is a few things in here that I think should be changed, but uh, past that, I think it's a great step uh, by the FAA to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Okay, next thing, hotel. Uh, they, there's a big rumor out there that they're coming up, they're planning to release a, a drone that has an 8K camera. Now, for those of you that are not familiar, 8K is, is huge. 8K is actually four 4K um, images all put together, all stitched together. That's the size of the, the sensor. Um, this, uh, this data, this rumor comes from the fact that Hotel submitted an application with the FCC uh, to get approval for this drone and uh, the specs came out. So it's hard to, to hide information these days on the internet. Uh, now, if you remember Hotel, I talked about them before, they have their, uh, their Evo, which captures uh, 4K at 60 frames per second in a pretty small platform, something that's about the size of a DJI Mavic. And a lot of people love flying their Hotel. So um, I think this is a great step forward. Now, some people might say, do we really need 8K? We don't really have the screens to watch 8K. It's gonna take a lot of room. I think the big application here is inspections. If you're doing inspections of power lines, for example, uh, with an 8K sensor, you'll be able to capture so much more data, be able to zoom in. Now the resolution for 8K is about uh, 33 megapixel. It's uh, 7880 by 4, 4320. So uh, 4K, regular 4K is 3840 by 2160. So that's double that. So imagine again, putting four 4K all together and, um, and, and just an incredible image. So uh, let me know what you think. Again, in the comment, is this something that you can see for inspection for whatever other application? Um, I think it might be overkill for the average person, but again, for a professional out there, I think this is a great step forward. Next thing I wanna talk about is the, uh, again, kind of an or another rumor. Uh, there were large X-wing looking uh, UAV that were spotted over Orlando, uh, over uh, Disney World in Orlando and they're expected to be used for a new promo for a new ride that's opening for Star Wars at the, at the park. And um, the, the thing that I find interesting for this new segment is the fact that uh, Disney has a permanent TFR. Now I know permanent temporary flight restriction doesn't really make sense, but it's been in place since uh, after 9-11 and it's over both parks in California and in Florida. And um, the uh, they actually uh, Disney has submitted and has a waiver to fly in their own airspace uh, using drones, and I think this is part of uh, of the plan. So they're supposed to be this like large SUV size uh, drone, and uh, it, again in the shape of the X-wing. So again, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, we'll see what it comes out. If we have videos, uh, then I'll show them to you in the future. The last thing I want to talk about is our big Black Friday sale that's currently going on until Monday. And uh, all of our courses are currently 50% off. Now I can tell you this is the best deal that you're gonna find uh, of all year on our courses. We don't usually discount the, the price that much, but you basically get $125 off from the, uh, the part 107, which is our best-selling course. We get several thousand students enrolled in that course uh, currently taking it. And um, I, I guarantee you, you're not gonna find a much better deal than that online at this stage to get your part 107 license. So we also have 50% 50 50 off, so 50 actually dollars off of our brand new FPV drone building course. So you learn how to build a cinematic drone, which is really cool, getting a lot of really good reviews. We released it last week and uh, just uh, amazing reviews from people already. And then also 50% off and $50 off our Drone Flying 101 and the Drone Masters Maneuver course that we have. And the last one, uh, I know some of you want to get into the next level and get your private pilot license and we also have a, a 35 hour course to get you ready for that and same quality that you'll find in the part 107 just a lot more information in there uh, perfect for actually anyone that wants to learn more about uh, the the world of fixed wing and the world of manned aircraft flying and uh, that's $194 right now so a uh, really good deal for 35 hours of content if you ask me and um, this is it that's all I'm going to talk about Again, um, hope you had a great Thanksgiving and uh, I'm actually recording this on Thanksgiving morning and I'm going to get uh, into the, the editing and post that for you guys so you can see it on Friday morning. And uh, I hope you have a great day and stay away from all the stores and the crazy people and, um, and I'll see you guys next week.